Well, no, we got together at 8 30. Like, I mean, I just needed to, to check the thing. Anyway, so we're live now. Buen provecho, by the way. I didn't get to tell you buen provecho. Okay, well, hello, Internet. <laughs> How's it been? Long time no see. Don't Ooh. see. It's been a whole year. Since wow. It, I'm sorry. Wow. Really? <laughs> You're going to do that joke. <laughs> oh I'm not sorry. <laughs> I don't care. Okay, whatever. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. an old lady and I make old lady jokes and I don't care. No fucks given. Also, whatever. Hi. We're only lovers left in the library and we're a vaginal fantasy group and we read romance and genre. And you are going to be privy to our discussion to a book that is probably not a romance but whatever whatever <laughs> i mean it's not uh, it's like a love man's no it's like when you, those, you know, when you go into those like um erotica porn websites and they have those like stories that are like mature love and they're also like 20 chapters long and it's like a really slow burn it's like that but you never get to the actual stuff. you never get burned you never <laughs> get the burn you never get burned <laughs> you just always just always warming up and then you're just disappointed you just yeah. go it's to sleep it's just enough for you to like your heart to palpitate a little bit because mine did not palpitate at all <laughs> well I, I, had, I had a moment i had maybe two moments where i was like like, and that's it though, because immediately I was like, yeah. stop it. Like you've been an asshole for like 90% of this exactly. book. Exactly. Also oh, between God. each of those possible palpitating moments, there were like six years. <laughs> <laughs> Heart of flutter, six years. Heart of flutter, <laughs> 10 years. Like. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. So, you've okay. got really nice skin, marries 14 other women. <laughs> <laughs> 19, right? 19 other women. Yep. Or has like 19 other women around or whatever. Plus like 240 concubines. All right, whatever. It's not, it's I think at some point his harem is up to like 500 women. That's crazy. I can't, I, that's a I lot of I, women. I, yeah. I can't, I can't even like flirty text. But okay, like, I kind of I get, get it because my theory is it's not, it's not about like having sex with all of them. It's like, it's like how I am with my bookcases. I have a bajillion bookcases and I have a bajillion. <laughs> Do I reread all of them? Absolutely not. But I like looking at them on my bookshelves, reading <laughs> more books and just letting them accumulate. Got all the different colors, like all the different like thicknesses, like. And then eventually you go back and you pick one of them and you kind of like revisit maybe or yeah, look at like, them. Oh, yeah, this used to be my favorite book when I was twelve. <laughs> oh, okay, I see it. You know, at least I don't know. So, so my books better get along with each other, or else they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you know what? I don't really mess with the books. They do their own thing, and I just kind of let them. You know, that's basically the attitude that the embers took. It was just so funny because then there were like, I mean, I I was glad that not everyone in the book was like that. Like, not that I think like there's anything wrong with that or whatever. It's the culture. But I appreciated that there were also like couples, um, like her mom and dad, you know what I mean? Who was like, oh, once enough for me, like. <laughs> I just love her, so I'm good. Yeah. Right, okay, so I mean, let's introduce the book because we kind of just jumped in. Yeah. So this month, well, it was in December, right? The December read was The 20th Wife by in Indu Sundaresan. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize right now. Yeah. <laughs> because this book didn't have a pronunciation guide. I didn't listen to the audiobook, so I have no idea how, how to pronounce any half of these. Yeah. Uh, no, any. <laughs> I just brought my own, like, Puerto Rican, you know, sounds to it. So this, to me, I went completely phonetically, just in do sundaresan. And so um, I'm going to read the back so that people know what we're talking about. So. <laughs> It says, and then afterwards you can give like uh, your impressions. Um, an, an enchanting historical epic of grand passion and adventure. This debut novel tells the captivating story of one of India's most controversial, controversial, I can't read, empresses, a woman whose brilliance and determination tri trumped 
myriad obstacles and whose love shaped the course of the Mughal Empire. Skillfully blending textures of historical reality with the rich sensual imaginings of a timeless fairy tale, the 20th wife sweeps readers up in Marinissa's battle, uh, embattled love with Prince Salim, and in the bedazzling destiny of a woman, a legend in her own time, who was all but lost to history until now. Man, I would have loved to read that book. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think that that is a really that happens good so often. No, but I think that's a really good description for the series as a whole, because like so much of the description is like, this was like such a powerful empress, and she like changed everything. But we actually never got to the point where she's the empress changing everything. Mm -hmm. That was the end of the book. So. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, like that sounds really cool. And I feel like, but I feel like that's the description of book one and two together. Yeah, right? actually what I think, even though this is the first book, I mm -hmm. feel like in order of publication, cause I think there's three of these. Yeah. Even though this book came out first, to me reading this felt like reading an unnecessary prequel. Like I didn't need this. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't need this. I needed the story. You know, well, no, I'm gonna get into it. That, but those, that, that was my. I'm just gonna just hijack yeah, the actually, overall yeah. impressions here. If I but, had read like the actual story and been like really into it, I would probably have enjoyed this book a lot more because I would have wanted to know how it got to the point. Yeah. But because I haven't, I. I, I mean, I, I wanted. I was reading it and I wanted to enjoy it more, but I, even though I. Even though, let's see, the descriptions of the settings, of the culture, everything felt felt real to me, but at the same time, so not. Like I couldn't, I didn't know, I didn't understand why anyone was doing what they were doing. And I, I felt disappointed in a lot of the characters, especially the main characters. Cause I mean, we're reading it for vaginal fantasy. We're reading it for romance purposes. And of course, there is a love story here, but I don't feel like the beginnings of that love story were so interesting that they merited a book on their own. I mean, they're not even together for, you know, until she's in her thirties and he's, uh, I don't even know how much older he is. They are not, I don't think they're actually together until like about this like last part. I'm trying to find the actual part where they like get together. Where he starts visiting her at the. Oh, Andrea, I like your nail. Right, it's bitching. It looks good. I like it. My gold nail polish is nice. Oh, thanks. See, everyone has been telling me that, but I really don't like it. I feel like it makes my hands <laughs> really pale. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think she starts hanging out with him around this this part. So for all of this. Which is 350 mm. pages. <laughs> um, there is no, yeah. There's, no, there's a lot of pining and there's a lot of, you know, wondering where the other person is. But at the same time, I also <laughs> did between like, opium hits <laughs> and murder yeah. and like <laughs> so much, so much intrigue that wasn't even intriguing. Is that, can that even be a thing? Can court intrigue not be interesting? Because <laughs> I didn't care for, it, it wasn't interesting. One thing that this author does a lot is that she explains things that don't need explanation. Uh, for example, like she'll in one sentence say, oh, and it turns out that he killed the emperor. Let me tell you how he did that. And I'm like, well, I mean, you already told me he killed the emperor. Like, what do I care? Like the way that it was explained afterwards was not interesting and so <laughs> there wasn't there wasn't much intrigue and for the focus that it had on the zenana or the harem of the women i felt like it spent such little time there i would have liked the book to center around the ladies and the you know their i know that it was a big part of the story but i didn't feel like it really centered there and that was a big part of you know nisa's kind of like trying to to, to run that place, you know, she's, she visits there and she goes to visit with Rukaya and Rukaya is the, the head bitch in charge of the harem. And then she takes her place and then it's like, <clears throat> so what happened? So what happened? Nothing, okay, we're done. 
that's that's how I that's how I felt. I felt like this book was an <laughs> unnecessary prequel. I wish actually we just started at the second one. But that being said, it was there were parts of that were beautifully written, and I was there were parts where I was like, oh my goodness, oh that's oh my god, yes. Other than that, I. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I felt like I was bored. I was really bored. I almost didn't finish it. So, the end for me. What about you guys? Um, so, Shai can go first because I want to get a chocolate bar. But. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities, this yeah, one. Yeah. Priorities. Um, so, I, I thought that this was an epic romance about two people's quest for power. Not necessarily for each other, because... Oh my god, you took the words right out of my mouth. Marunisa's uh, obsession was with marrying Salim and becoming an empress. Like, her whole obsession is that she wants to be an empress. And Salim happens to be really hot. And Salim's <laughs> obsession is with dethroning his dad, first of all, then maintaining his position of power and he also just happens to be marrying all these random chicks and every now and then remembers this one chick who was super hot who he saw once and was like word she's hot and then four years five years later he's like oh yeah there's that chick again she's still hot cool and then like another five years go by and he's like oh word she got married but yo she's still really hot like to, to Salim, Marunisa's main appeal is that she, like, ages really well. Like, you know, Melon and Mommy is like, we, you know, we age really gracefully. So every time he sees her, he's like, word, cool. She still looks like she's 19, 20, and she's got a really small waist and then, like, her hips and, like, her full bosom, which... With all the clothing they wear, I feel was kind of exaggerated because I don't know that you'd be able to. Ch Every time the wind blew and it accentuated her figure, all the men around her lost their shit, which was a little like a little much. I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> she's, she's walking down the plaza. All of you are with your wives. Like, stop staring at her. It's a little, mm, it's a little much. But yeah, it's like the greatest love story of our generation where the object of their affection is like being able to like get shit and have stuff mm -hmm. and be like in power. Um, I thought that the descriptions were really, really beautiful and I loved a lot of the uh, scenery description, a lot of the description of the food. There's so much food in this book and it sounds delicious and it sounds amazing. And I definitely got hungry reading a lot of this. <laughs> But some parts I ended up just skimming over because it was just a little long-winded. And then because you have so many different characters uh, playing their respective roles, every now and then I lost track of who was who, so it was a little hard to follow the story. So I'd have to keep going back and try to remember who was saying what and who's trying to murder the emperor this time? Cool. Who's giving Salim really bad advice that he keeps listening to? Oh, oh that asshole. Oh, yeah. he murdered someone. Oh, this hmm. started with a K. I always get, got the two sons confused. Like the yeah. 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 We. I mean, the benefit of the print book is that it it has the the chart. I don't know the names. Uh, and I, felt, I honestly felt that that made it really authentic because you know. Not everybody, not like people's names repeat, okay? And then there were all, I mean, there wasn't anybody called like Peter or something. You know what I mean? Like everybody had like a very distinctive name. I don't know how common they are. I wish that they, it, you know, I had some sort of, I just felt like I was make, doing a disservice not pronouncing them appropriately. But then again, again, I didn't take the book. But there's also a map on the front. I don't know. This map was oh, pretty cool. helpful. And this thing too, the, the, oh. A bit spoilery, though. I'll be honest. The family tree. A little, a little, a little, a little spoilery, but it's fine. And then the back, there's a glossary, which I didn't discover until I basically was finished with the book. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what begam means. <laughs> Word. But um, yeah, it wasn't. I didn't dislike it. I didn't dislike it really. 
And there were some points where I got really into the story, so I would just sort of be reading through a lot of it, and it didn't take me as long as I thought it was going to take me to get through it. So it was it was good. It was good to get through, but I don't know. I didn't I didn't have any sort of real investment in the relationship. Like I didn't care if they ended up together or not because I didn't believe that they had real emotion or real attachments towards each other. I feel like Salim could have just ended up with her as not ended up with her, and I feel like she sort of got the shit end of the deal through so for so long through so many different circumstances that in the end she's like oh cool you want to get married all right i guess that can happen now cool no <laughs> word there's a lot of jewels involved awesome and then, and then <laughs> that's it so i think i gave it like three and a half stars I, I i gave it like an i like it but i didn't really like it and i didn't love it and again, it's like you said, it feels kind of like an unnecessary prequel. Like maybe if we had picked up the second book first and then gotten this book as like a filler to just explain how everything happened, it would have been a lot more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, all yeah. in all, very nice descriptions, very good language, very poetic at times. Uh, it had very musical and lyrical language. And it, uh, there were characters that I really liked. I liked her mom. You know, her mom was a really cool character. And I did like Ruki, Ru Rukia? 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 I don't Rukia. know. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Rukia? I, the, the dowager. Well, sad. The, at first, she was the, yeah. oh my god, what, how, what is the word that they used? The leader. The, I just called her the head bitch in charge. She was yeah. the HBIC of the hand. The HBIC. She's and basically then like she becomes a dowager to, empress. Yeah, exactly. So she, she, I thought she was cool because she had all this power and could manipulate people and have them just do what she wanted them to do because she had all of this. Yeah, she just she was just powerful and gave people shit. She felt like giving them shit. I thought that was cool. I'm like, all right, I I want to be that character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much our fault. Not bad. Not great. What do you think, Andrea? Um, so I I mostly agreed with both of you, but I think. So that we don't have like three repetitions of the same thing, I'm gonna play a little bit of a devil's advocate and actually say what I did like about okay. the um because I didn't think it was all bad. So I thought, um, I I do agree with what Tashai said. I think she really did want to be empress, but I also think she like very much understood what kind of a person Salim was. Like I don't think for her it was just a he's a hot dude and that's it. Like. I think like throughout the book, there were a lot of moments where she was like, I can see why he is doing this. I understand his reaction. I think it's dumb. I wish I would have been able to give him advice so he would have done this other thing. But like, and, and I, I feel like it's true. I feel like if she had been with him, like things would have been really different from the start because she did understand him and, and saw how to help him like do things differently. Um, and I think like, I don't know, to me, the relationship was kind of like you had a, like when you have a relationship and then it kind of ends, but there's like no closure. And so like every couple of months you look up your ex on Facebook or you like stalk through his, <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, yeah, dude is still alive. Oh, he has a girlfriend now, huh? Cool, not really happy for him, but I guess I'm happy for him. Like like that kind of thing. Because yes. I felt like he was always checking up on her like that. Like every couple of months or every couple of years, he'd be like, Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna send like a raise to this uncle of hers, or I'm gonna like give a promotion to her dad, or I'm gonna do this in this like really weird way of showing I care about her, even though I haven't seen her in forever kind of way, which is really weird. Um, right. <laughs> but I do think that when they were actually together, it was very much just chemistry, which is why I was so surprised when they started talking at the end that it was like, like he would come over and they would just have these like long conversations. Like his first gift to her was a book. A book, and that was the part yeah. that I was like, oh. he yeah. gives her like the history of per a Persian like, king or something. And I'm like, oh man, that's really well romantic. thought out wow. choice that she really liked. And I feel like they talked about a lot of things and they would talk about like literature and politics and like all these things. And that made me think that like they really were like compatible, like not just physically. Um, but again, it's like weird that they kind of stayed 
wanting each other or at least semi interested in each other for all of these years without having had those conversations and those conversations actually like happen at the end which is like, exactly i just feel like if she was if she had, had that understanding of him it wasn't because she loved him it was just because she had an understanding of him as a per like people you know yeah. what i mean i i don't but that they framed it like it was a romance like they loved each other but i just think she was savvy like it yeah. would have been and uh. she, she is very savvy because she the only reason that she catches his attention each of the times they meet is not because she's beautiful even though she is it's because she, she's super savvy about the things that she does like mm -hmm. one time she like releases these birds that he just bought that he really wanted another time he like spills wine like like she purposely does things to get his attention that she knows will get his attention so i just thought she was a really smart lady who knows how to read people very well and was somehow weirdly fixated on this being the man for her and i mean yeah. we've all been there we've all been like yeah. if i could just be with him like everything would be perfect right and, right yeah i, I yeah you're i i would have but i wish that her, <laughs> her like romance her like romance had been with power Look, I want to like now that I want to. Did you want to say anything else about the book, Andrea? Because like now that you said that, I kind of like want to. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, I agree with most of the things you guys. All said. right, and again, I didn't, I didn't like hate this book, but okay. So at the end, there's this like interview with the author, um, or not an interview, but like some questions that she was asked, and and um, they were talking about Nisa. Question number like the asker number three. It says, "Why did you choose to portray Marinissa as a sympathetic character?" as opposed to mean-spirited and ruthless woman. And then uh, she says basically that, you know, whatever historical accounts she could find either said that she was a really wonderful woman, really generous and kind to like this evil conniving, like me, 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 you know, this is like, just an evil power hungry lady. Mm -hmm. And that she was trying to, I tried to find the woman in between the two extremes and if that was the case, I don't think it was successful because at Ooh. least personally, I, I, but see, I, I don't think that a mean spirit, I don't think that a mean spirited evil character can't also be sympathetic because I think of, I don't know if you guys watch Game of Thrones, but I consider Cersei Lannister Cersei. like a terrible person, like, a ter like a, as a, as yeah, a person. If you, if you look at the answer to that question, she yeah. said, um, uh damn i just had it um yeah it says like he must have possessed slyness and cunning to have risen so swiftly to power within the zanana and at court so i feel like that probably came out once she was married to him more which mm -hmm. again is a part of the story that we didn't read because i can see her being like that super smart like i need to become the head bitch in charge now that yeah. i'm says her cunning and ruthful ruthlessness Find full expression when Marinissa becomes Empress of Mughal India oh, in the yeah. sequel titled The Feast of Roses. As the other extreme, I do believe that Marinissa also possessed some charm that went beyond ba 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 ba. Shy left. Shy left. Oh shit, oh shit. I didn't even notice. I was <laughs> telling you, but you were like really into your reading. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Whatever. I coño. Well, I mean, let me see if she needs the chat. She needs the link again. Okay, but I mean. Just to reiterate, I think that a character can be ruthless and sympathetic. And I feel like she could have been ruthless from the get-go. I feel like making her sympathetic to me made her less interesting. I didn't really care for her after that. After, like, when, you know, she just was, like, the sad girl who just wanted Sorry. to be a princess. Oh, you're back. My Wi-Fi crapped out for a second. You're, you're like, back. what's happening? Okay. Yeah, well, I yeah. <laughs> I don't know. At the same time, though, I feel like if, like, I get what you're saying that, like, you wish she had been more like that and not as, like, pathetic. But at the same time, I feel like, <laughs> but, but I feel like it wasn't her choice to be pathetic. Like, so many of, like, the stuff, so many of the things that happened in the book were not her choice. Like, they said, now you're going to work here. Now you're going to marry this dude. Now you're going to move here. So, like, I think she did the most with what she could. And I think the moments that she had, to change her situation, she took advantage of. She was like, "That that's Celine. Like, I'm gonna go over here and like shove like my face at his face and like brush him that he wants to make out with me, kind of thing. Like, let me flip off my veil. Like, 
Like she was awesome. <laughs> like the opportunities yeah. she had, I feel like she really took them. It's just she had so few opportunities. I yeah, know. I agree. I agree with that. She was savvy in as far as she could be savvy. And she was constantly trying to give her dad advice on how to not fuck yeah. up and do good things for the family and do the best for his position. And he like didn't listen to her and that shit bit him in the ass. But um, no, she was definitely, I could see that description fitting the way she was written in the book of like an in-between of being this super sympathetic character and kind of like a conniving person. Because when you see her relationships with her family, she was like obsessed with doing whatever she could to help her family. And once she finally has her kid, she tries as hard as physically possible to be a good mom and, and, and a good support system for her child. And the ruthlessness only, there's no real ruthlessness, but the there conniving isn't. of it. Sorry. There isn't though. She's too wrapped up in being, I feel like the author wanted to make her into a good person. And she was yeah. doing, she was respectful to her parents and she did whatever, if she, if she did whatever she could, she did it within the bounds of, of the oh, culturally. Boy, exactly. Specific. You know, she was on, she was an on a leash. You know, and there was only certain things. things she could do, but I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, like you can only be so conniving or ruthless before you risk public shaming or being like thrown into the plaza and judged by a jury of your peers who are all under a very specific mindset that prioritizes men. So <laughs> but I, I understand why she can't really be like a Cersei Lannister in this circumstance because like she would have been murdered. She, she did stand up for herself at the end though, I think, because like, I don't know, like, she finally has, like, the emperor coming to talk to her or whatever, and he's like, be my concubine, and she's like, F you, I'd rather never see you again than be your concubine, like, I mean, any- I want my receipts! If she really was fully on the sympathetic, like, pathetic, like- Put a um, ring on it, put a ring on it. Passive end of the spectrum, she would have gone to be his concubine and, like, been- So that's really where I, you know, you can see that it wasn't just about being with him. Like she really did want to be an empress. <laughs> Except she was. Yeah, she wanted the to have her voice. Of the book talking about Salim, not about like she. Ah, I get. I understand what you're saying, but like I didn't feel satisfaction when when it got to that point. I mean, I did. I said, "Oh, great. She's like you know, fighting for her position. She's like been waiting her entire life, not only to be with this person that she." loved because I guess now they realize that they have chemistry because they actually spent more than like a uh, half an hour together. 15 minutes together. <laughs> That's it. And then, you know, she, but you know, again, I just feel like it was all about the power for her. And I wish that she'd just been like, ah, oh, if I could only get my hands on the ground. I don't know. So I this is more about me as a person. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what I yeah, want. I think, her. I think it's more, I Honestly, think it's more you. I, you had higher expectations for her as true story. This, I did. Maybe I did. I this. Empress. What I what I told Chris okay. earlier when we were talking about this was I just wish the like book one and two had been condensed into one because I really would like to see her being like super sly and whatever and being Empress and like becoming the person in charge and like I would love to see all those things. I am not going to read the second book. No, me neither. I, I me wish neither. that part of the first book so that I could end with that like yeah she got there and she showed them all and she was like the person now but instead I just got like oh maybe she will become that person oh yeah. and then she did but like more of as an afterthought in this book and read more in the next book to but find out that's just exactly. how just how just how powerful she was that's uh, what it is it's just, like an afterthought that's yes that's how it feels her quest for power is an afterthought. Her quest I mean, for that did. Some, she did do some some stuff, you know. She she um, got the the guy to. Uh, okay, there was the empress that really hated her. Uh, Jaga Jaga Gosini Gosini. Jaga. You got Gosini. Yeah, you got and um, she she got the guy. You know, she there was like the little the little basically the little finger or the Varys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, check her lackey, her eunuch, and no, so that's Varys for sure. And then these dudes you know, like, actually castrated. No, I mean, called him a eunuch. He's a eunuch. Okay, I. Andy doesn't like talking about castration. 
<laughs> no, he does not. Because uh, he was neutered, so. <laughs> <gasps> He doesn't. Okay. I was like, oh, he doesn't know. He doesn't. Um, but see, I was. I wanted to know more about that. I. I actually should probably just Google it. I wanted to know if like you, like if you applied for the job and then you were like, all right, prerequisite, you got to get this done, man. I don't think that you apply to be a. I think that you just maybe grew up as a slave. Yeah. And then you are trusted to be around the women because you were castrated. Got it. I also think it might be. Um, not necessarily a punishment, but yeah, I I feel like you get castrated because you like fucked up at some point. That's something else that happens where you end up being castrated. Or and they then want if you, to you be like a, a singer to have like a high pitched voice or something, right? Castrato. So like, so if you did it for religious reasons, then you volunteer for it. It's a cleansing type deal, and then you become like. Yeah, I, don't know. I have no, I don't know how that works. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, I was just wondering. I, I, really, I don't want to read that book. Yeah, I realized I know nothing about it. I would totally read it. Okay, but seriously, though, like, I could have used more time in the Zanata with, like, yeah, the, again, I really and the, HBIC. and the eunuch and them, like, all of that intrigue. Can we, can we talk about the, the boys now? Can we, like, we talked about Nisa and, you know, what kind of character she was. Let's, I want to talk about Celine. How Celine's a little bitch. <laughs> oh my god. I don't even know how to, I don't even, I was like, this is the guy? Yep. <laughs> yep. As I'm reading it, I'm like, this is the guy. This is the guy I'm supposed to be reading for? Mm-hmm. He's just, um, he's, he's, he's a the, spoiled his introduction, bastard. His, yeah, he's so spoiled, but he's just like, oh, so spoiled. Like, his introduction is that he has a cup, and he, like, throws it, and he's like, why can't I be king? That is the oh first my God, yeah. I hear of him as a grown-up. It's like Scar. He's like a young Scar. He's like, ugh, why can't I be Ember? Ugh, my dad's super nice to me, he gives me everything I want, is super supportive for a father who's also an emperor, and, like, cares about me and loves me, and... <laughs> Supports me emotionally and physically, but you know what? Fuck him. I don't want to wait until he decides to retire. I know, right? Gosh, king. why wouldn't he die? He's already given me everything. Why can't he just die and give no, me the... and the worst part is, like, he tries to poison him, fails. His him dad worse. does not even turn his back on him, but, like, tries to, like, remain, you know, open-minded and figure out his son. And then he tries to get him killed again. Like... Like, like, do you realize the kind of, like, do you realize the kind of arguments I would have in my home if I ate the last piece of tembleke? Like, <laughs> let alone if I tried to poison my, like, mom or dad because I really wanted, I really, I went, eh, what you No, and now what I love is that afterwards, like, when his own son is trying to do the same thing, he's like, oh. He's like, what, 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 how, how could this happen? What, what kind of son would betray this? his own father? And I think, like, one time in the book, he, he goes, like, oh, this must be what my dad felt like. But it, it's such a like, over, like, <laughs> like, he thinks it once and immediately discards it. And <laughs> He's like, nah, nah, I, it's not the same thing. Because, like, I really wanted the throne, but he just, like, really wants the throne. It's not, the, it's not, the, I deserve the throne. I deserve it. And he's a spoiled little bastard. Oh, man. Uh, and let's talk Someone about get me another wife. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, but let's, let's, I think that Akbar was a real MVP in this because he put up with so much garbage. He was such a good sport. From his sons such and grandsons. Sport. He, and he had the, he had a, a harem of women and he was considered a good emperor. Um, but he had this, this one wife, Ru Rukaya, Rukaya, I don't know how to pronounce her name. And uh, he, he trusted her, went to her for advice, didn't care if she couldn't have children, you know, um, and she, he was, she was his most trusted wife. Uh, and I thought that was, I thought that that was a better romance than actually Salim and Miranissa. I thought that that was the, the love. I felt like my, my romance was fulfilled I really there. Liked, I really liked, um, well, after she kind of steals <laughs> another woman's child the baby which is kind of a little weird but okay well, moving past that um i love that akbar would come to visit her and like 
he would just like spoon in bed with her and the baby. Like, I just thought that was so sweet. Like, that's when you really know that it wasn't about like the sex or anything with him. Like, he just genuinely liked being in her company. It was mm-hmm. like, exactly. Yeah. And and I think her, he was oh. married. He was married to her cousin Salima after her husband died, her first husband. And Salima and Rukaya were like cousins. And he's like, you know what? We're going to take care of Salima. I'll marry her. You guys are super cool friends. You can hang out at the Zanana. Like, I got her. Don't worry. You guys can still be besties. And they were just like, oh, cool. I'm living with my best friend now whose husband died. Awesome. And, like, he didn't, really, he didn't really sleep with her either. So it was like. No, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's so what I'm cool. saying. Like, I think that Akbar. He didn't deserve all the shit that Salim put him through. <laughs> at all. Oh, my God. He, did, he didn't. Um, and I, that, that was really problematic to me, too. I, okay, everyone deserves love, right? But oh, I was just pissed. I was like, this guy's a jerk. And they make Marinissa to be such a, I mean, in the first part of the book, they make her such a wimp. And she's married to this guy who's, of course, is going to be a jerk to her. And I, I know that he couldn't do it for diplomatic reasons, but I really wanted him to flex his like prince muscle and like get her divorced, straight up kill Ali Cooley and like freaking marry her. Oh my god! I mean, I know that's not how that's not how things were were gonna go, and that's for the story. It's her best, but man, did I want him to do it? I was like, come on, come on, Celine, come on! And it's then he's like, because he was like, he really was such a, ugh, that guy was such a douche. Like he would make me angry. And when, you're when, such a dickhead. Oh my gosh, I know. And like, I felt so bad because she kept having these like miscarriages. And oh then, man, that's really tragic. Oh, when she was like pregnant again, and then she walks in on him and like the servant girl. Oh. Oh. Everyone, that was the boys were really the right were there. bad. The yeah. boys were bad. Except for Akbar, I, all of the boys were trash. Yeah, and um, Karu, whatever. The the the. No. But the only reason that he grew up to be a decent person was because Karam. he is he was raised by Rukaya. He is raised by okay, but Salim was raised. Wait, was Salim raised by Rukaya too? No. Yes. But yeah, it's not your mind. Well, no. Like combination cause cause Salim yeah, but was it born like to that. another. It wasn't like it wasn't like that because um, with the with the K one, he like was really raised by her. Like he slept in her bed every night. He was with her all the time. Like that was not the case. So yeah. Plus, remember, Celine had two brothers, and so he had to deal with them. Yeah. Karam was raised by himself. They paid him a lot of attention. I'm sure that he got very like personalized classes and stuff. Celine was raised with his two other brothers, who also were like alcoholics. Yeah, they were all just who died. Kids. <laughs> they were all substance abusers, man. <laughs> yeah. They were just constantly drinking and smoking. And I guess, I mean, it was fine. They had the, the money and the luxury. Man, but I did love it when Nisa finally became Empress and she was, like, rolling in money. She yeah. had dresses, jewels. And I'm like, girl, you made it. I was like, mm. <laughs> You made it. <laughs> you made it. You did it, girl. You did it. You, like, have to put up with put up with all of this garbage for that. There's a there's a question here that I wanted to ask you guys. I, I have to peace out for five minutes because Indy wants to go out. See, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh. really um, so oh. I'm going to take him out real fast and I will be right back. Keep talking. I will be back. All righty. Indy's such a talk blocker. <laughs> it's fine. We're doing, we're doing fine. We're fine. Um, what were we saying before this? Yeah, I'm glad when she finally got the money too. As soon as they started just giving her jewels, mm-hmm. I was like, "Word, you put on de jewelry, girl!" And that he gave her those three properties, and one of them alone was this port property, and would have made her just rich as hell. Yeah, that yeah. was great. That was great. I'm all about getting property as a gift because <laughs> she's harder to take away <laughs> I suppose, I suppose. yeah uh let me see those are all my questions i mean i was gonna ask you if nisa was a feminist because 
I was thinking the same thing when I was taking a shower today. I was like, mm, we should bring up that as a question. Actually, to talk this, about. One, this one was a question here, but I was kind of waiting for Andrea to come back. But whatever, I'll start. So one of them says, one reviewer said that the 20th wife is, above all, a tale of ambition. Mm -hmm. Marinissa is not our culture's idea of a feminist. She does not struggle to change the laws of her society, only to fulfill her ambition within them. Do you agree with this? And how did uh, Marinus's influence help shape the court? I mean, I don't know that because I didn't. I don't know what she did. So let's just yeah. leave it at. Do you agree with this? <laughs> As in that she's not our idea of a feminist. Like, what kind of a feminist is she then? I don't know what like, what she's trying to. But we're trying to answer um, here. So I, I was thinking about this earlier today um, as I was debating what I was going to say I liked and didn't like about uh, the, the book and the story and the characters. I feel like Maranisa is a feminist figure. Mm -hmm. I feel like she is a feminist character because her... Como te digo? Her affection for Salim let's call it that, was equal to the awareness she had about what a marriage to him would mean for her and her family, right? So, so she may have respected him, respected his decision-making, thought that he was attractive and been very drawn to him, but this was all balanced out with her thoughts of, I can be empress, I can have my voice heard, I can influence things, I can help my family. Like these are thoughts that she had throughout the book at the same time as she was thinking, you know, Salim is so handsome, I wonder why he made that bad decision. Oh, Ali Cooley fucking sucks. Uh, I'm never gonna have a baby. Like all of these other thoughts are interspersed with her internal just planning out what kind of influence she would have when she finally makes it and when she's forced to marry Ali Cooley I feel like that's something that she had in mind too well okay he's a well-respected soldier this blows I don't want to be with him but you know let me do what I can with what I have so when she was with Ali Cooley she was a mistress of the household did what she had to do manage the people who were working there she had her shit together you know I feel like you can only you can only really do so much under certain circumstances, mm -hmm. given, you know, level of education, access to people who are the rule makers, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So given her circumstances, given the actual ability she had to stretch her fingers out and do anything, because she could have easily just not done anything. She could have lived her life and kept trying to have babies and gone shopping and done her groceries and stuff, but she kept right. I mean, she could have just been a concubine. I mean, even if exactly. she was going to be with um, Salim, she could have just stayed as a concubine. Exactly. But she kept informed about what was going on in the government, what the political situations were. Oh, she God. did her reading. Sorry, we didn't even get to walk because my neighbor's pit bull that they keep tied behind the house escaped. And then he came oh, no. towards me and like practically tackled me to the ground because he loves me. And then I had to like take him to my neighbor's house and be like, "Yo, oh, your dog's out. Oh no. Aww. And he's, and he's just like, I'll save your mommy. And his little butt muscles clenched up and uh I don't Aww. know. No, no, no chance. Well, we're almost I think we're big. we're almost oh, we already unclenched. He just pooped. <laughs> Let me clean that. Oh no! <laughs> oh my God, Indy, come on! <laughs> but get your shit together. <laughs> Literally, come on, man. He was scared. He's so tiny, and the pit bull was so big. And that's fine oh. because it's fine because the dog, like in my in my apartment, I'm it's listening. I'm just gonna clean the poop. <laughs> like Brownie, he gets like I'll throw out the trash, and it's right next to where he hangs out, and he gets so mad that I go throw out my trash. He's like, ah. He starts spinning in circles, and then he'll take, like, a shit. He'll take an angry shit. And then he won't know what to do with himself. He's like, mm -hmm. uh, he smells it, he looks at me, and then he just kind of, like, calms down. 
No, I mean, I, I have experience. I mean, I know that that's how I feel whenever I watch a movie that Harry Connick Jr. is in. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it did not happen where I wanted it to happen, but it's okay. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, ask down the the question, Christina. Wait, what was the question? Oh, shit. If, if, if we think, if we think that uh, after all of this, if Marinisa was a feminist, feminist? she can consider a feminist or a feminist icon. What do you think? Um, I mean, I guess, and also based on the book, because I don't, I don't know what the author took from actual history and what she's kind of like painting uh, and what she's know. flavoring. I think it depends on whether you consider someone to be a feminist because of their thoughts or their actions. So I think like in her head, she kind of was, but I don't think she was brave enough to like challenge the status quo. Yeah, that's what the question is. Like, she doesn't really challenge the status quo. She mostly does it out of personal am ambition. Yeah. And so she's not a typical, or she's not our modern day definition of one. What is she, she one? Well, I think she definitely wants more choice and, and tries to get more choice than a lot of other people in her life. Like, I think a lot of the other females are more passive. Um, Okay, and then I want your your I want your a comment on this because as I was finishing the book, I was like, man, what the hell does that sentence even mean? Oh. Down at the at the end, there's like a there's an afterword by the author. She talks about um, um the end. I don't know if you, it's like the very last the last page of the afterword, on page three hundred and eighty three. Uh -huh. um, she says, although the world in general knows of Karam's devotion to Arjumand, which is Karam eventually becomes right the emperor after his father, and he marries uh, this chick Arjumand because of the Taj Mahal. There's no doubt that Zhang Hagir or Zhang Hagir, who was Salim, mm -hmm. uh, so Salim's devotion to Marisa equaled, if not surpassed, his sons to Arjumand. He may not have left a monument for posterity, but he gave her the love of his later years, free reign to do as she pleased. Miranissa did so, and she loved him enough to respect his wishes. She is known to have ruled the empire, but she was powerful because of him, not despite him. And I was like, damn. So, I, you know, so she wasn't really powerful on her, on her own. She needed the emperor as a vehicle yeah. to to get her to the seat of power and maybe get her some sort of agency, but she still needed him. She still needed him. Well, but I, think, I don't think that's a reflection on her. I think it's just, there's no way anyone. Well, I, I, I agree. I don't think that she isn't a feminist, but you know, I do, I do think that she doesn't fit the mold because of her circumstances, but given what she had, I suppose. Yeah, I think, and I think even when she was young, she, she was very capable of discerning like which women had more power and figuring out what she had to do. So like from the beginning, she was like, if I can get into an imperial harem, how do you say harem? Harem, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, like if I can get there, that'll be great because those women have more free reign to do X, Y, and Z than your normal woman. So even when she was, younger and and maybe not even as focused on the empress part of it she was still like if i could at least do this though i'd at least be better than other women and she really didn't mean it so much because of the riches but because of that ability to make choices like right. and use the out. and use her i don't know her cunning her <laughs> intelligence what you know her parents did get her give her an education more of an education exactly. really. she was like i can I can have intelligent conversations and access to books and all these things. I can go out into the bazaar and do whatever. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I think very early on she recognizes in herself that need for more freedom and she wants it. It's just that, again, I don't think she had a lot of opportunities to get there. And I think the ones that she did have, she used, you know, very wisely and they, they got her somewhere. But yeah, a lot, a lot of it was just 
chance, honestly. Like, it was pure chance that the emperor happened to walk into the room where she was that last time. And that's really what led to them finally having those chats and blah, blah, blah. I mean. Yeah. And also, um, he, I feel like, well, he loved her and he respected her. And he obviously listened to her and thought that, you know, what she had to say was valid. Yeah. You know, maybe he considered her an equal, even if she really wasn't. In well, the government. That unless you read book number two, which you are not. Yeah, gonna... And I will not. I will not. And yeah. usually I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to read it. I usually read them. No, no. Well, when I, when I looked it up, like the real life characters, they, they basically say that once they got married, she became this advisor and people were convinced that she was drugging him or had him addicted to opium or something because why else would he listen to her but she advised him on all these political things and deals and rulings and it led to a successful empire i mean of course <laughs> and they and a lot of, you know some of the accounts say that it's because she it because of her because she would advise him and give him all this information and like push him in the right direction. Yeah. But I'm okay with both of those and, scenarios. And, like I'm okay yeah. with, and he was so devoted to her and just knew that she was this HBIC in the making that he was like, word, okay, you know what? You're actually very smart. You totally know what you're talking about. I'm yeah. going to do what you say. And people are like, she must have enchanted him because why else would he listen to her? Fair. Even though she was the 20th wife, she really was the only wife that he married just for the heck of it. I mean, yeah. all the other wives, like, there was a reason, like, political or financial, whatever. Like, there was a reason for all of those marriages. This was the only one where he was like, I like you. Yeah. <laughs> Get married. <laughs> Get married. Yes. <laughs> like, we should get married or like you should be my girlfriend like I'm more than just a girlfriend yeah you could be my side hoe here's a bunch of shit she's like what <laughs> uh uh I ain't about that so let me oh. play you Beyonce's lemonade and we'll discuss this <laughs> <laughs> formation is it no formations or in the lemonade let's is get the... information let's yeah. get information <laughs> <laughs> okay um so wow oh, oh. We talked a lot about <laughs> I feel like I am happy because like I even if I don't love a book, I like being able to like I have these ideas and I wanted to know what you guys thought. So it was good. Did you guys want to mention anything else? Did you have any highlighted passages that you wanted to I okay to kind so of, I didn't have a highlighter when I was reading this. So I just kind of folded some pages and I'm having a really hard time remembering what on the page I actually wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like uh, how not exciting this book is that I'm like reading this page and being like, what did I find cool about this? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm trying yeah. to find, I think, oh, oh, I, I did, okay. I I mean, it's not even worth reading though. It's just, it's just, I just found it super cutesy when they like decide to get married and then mm -hmm. they're not supposed to see each other for like 10 days. But then oh, they, yeah. they go to the library and they have like a silk screen between them and they like read to each other through the silk screen and then like give each other like little kisses through the cloth and I thought that was really cute. That is that was so cute. Yes, I thought that was adorable. <laughs> that was yeah. really cute. I'm like, ah, they like each other for real. Yeah. yeah, I know. And that's the thing. It's like I wish that had happened like earlier in the book. I feel like it might have made me like root for them more, you know what I mean? But like, it's cute too. I also, I want to say that I liked, I mean, while you look, I liked her origin story. I liked, yeah, I liked the, the, the very first part of the book, the, the prologue was just really nice how her dad was like in disgrace, they couldn't keep the baby. And then all of these things kept happening to, to keep her with them. Like, oh, they don't have they don't have money. What are they going to do? They're going to leave her. Uh, uh, this guy, he helps them out, tells them to join the caravan. And then they join the caravan, but they still don't have money. So he's like, whatever, I'm going to leave her because, you know, they leave her under a tree. And then, like, the same guy who gave him, let him join the caravan was like, look, I, there's this kid. There's knowing that that's his daughter mm -hmm. gives her back. And I was just like, oh, it's destiny. Like, he's meant to 
be with her. I kind of wish that her parents had, you know, also pushed the envelope a little bit more, but whatever. Um, but, but I liked her parents a lot. I liked her, her origin story. And I liked that her name meant the son of women. And, uh, and that the name that she's given as Empress is means something else. Ah, I forgot the name. Uh, it, but it was a cool name. It's like, oh, it means like the light of the world or something. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, not just of women, but of the world, of men and women. Yeah, where is that? So I just, so Shai sent us a Snapchat of a sunflower while she's like. Yeah, it's right here. My mom got them when we went to the sunflower field. <laughs> I was like, where'd you get oh, them yeah. from? <laughs> I'm like, this looks so pretty. I'm literally just staring at the sunflower. It's like right Nor, nor ha or Jahan, light of the world. Light of the world. Yes. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. I forgot what the fuck I was going to say about Marinisa. What's, I didn't hate her as a character. I just I don't want it more. I was well, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I was going to say, I don't remember having any specific passages highlighted, but every time one of his stupid advisors told him to kill his dad, I would <laughs> highlight it and be like, stop. <laughs> stop. Your friends are scrubs. Stop listening oh to my your God, yes. friends. Did he keep listening to whatever. Oh, my whatever. God. I don't even know why. All right, well. Well, I, I liked it. If you, um, whatever, if you're watching this and you really enjoy... Like a historical, like you know, just like a this is a romance, but just, location yeah. heavy, really well described book. Then I would suggest the twentieth wife. And if you find it intriguing enough, move on. Read the second one. Tell me all about it. And cool. <laughs> I know the third one has to do with like, or the second one or the third one has to do with the Taj Mahal. That sounds great. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, it wasn't so great that I'm going to read the second one. It was a little disappointing, the ending for me. Uh, um, yeah. But, okay, so I wish that I read more diversely, but I have read um, some Indian romances that I like. So I listened to Smart Bitches Trashy Books podcast, and they had interviewed this author called Sonali Dev. Um, she was talking about her books and her experience writing, and so I thought that she was super cool. And I went ahead and read both of the books that she's got out. The first one, so good. It is obviously <laughs> modern, uh, but it is um, called The Bollywood Affair. And I, I don't want you to think that it's just like, ding, ding, ding. you know, I don't want you to like go to, I mean, I feel like it does have stereotypes in it, but they work. It feels authentic. It feels like, okay, yeah, this is a thing. Um, this girl, she's married to this guy, and this other guy comes over, and the brother comes to break up the marriage, and I don't know. It's just, it's really good. I don't want to give, I don't want to give it away in case you want to read it. It's really good. The other one, The Bollywood Bride, is really dramatic, but they both have, well, the first one is really funny, and it's got like sexy times in it. It's got crazy sexy times in it, which I was surprised because I was like, oh my God. But of course it's modern and why, why can't it? Why can't there be? Whatever. Even though there were a lot of strict parents in that one. <laughs> and in The Bollywood Bride, and that one's more serious. It's got a lot of like, you know, trigger warnings for like abuse and whatnot, but, but still just so good and man, satisfying, super satisfying sexy times. So. I haven't read any. I haven't really read anything else from an Indian author. I mean, I'm glad that I was able to add this, and I'm gonna try to read more. But uh, it was good. And if you guys want actual, like, legit romance with like courting and also like maybe misunderstandings, romantic comedy, then the Bollywood Affair is what you're looking for. Also, sexy times, which this didn't have, except for the screen kissing, which was a little hot. <laughs> uh, I don't have any other recommendations. I wish I did, but I, I mean, aside from like, I, I feel like, like I've read I've read books by Indian authors, but I just don't read a lot of romance, to be perfectly honest, unless it's like for book club. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. No, I read a I read the White Tiger. No, the White Tiger. I don't know. I'm not even gonna get into it because I don't I don't remember now. Anyway. Mm -hmm. 
uh, life of Pi doesn't count because that was just a camera. No, no. I will look. I'm writing it down. I'm going to find more, find more authors. And if anyone out there has made it this far and you want to recommend something to me, go for it. Not it at all, but I'm loving it so much that I just have to throw it out there. I am reading the best book right now. <laughs> like it might be, I started it technically in 2016 because I started it like the 30th or something. And I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably one of the best books I've read in 2016. So it's homegoing and the author is from Ghana, and it's her first book. Oh, yeah, that's the one you already told yeah. me about. And she's, like, 26, and this book is, like, amazing. So yeah, I wanna, I marked it down to read it because it sounds really good. I um, want to read it. it. It's, like, it sounded cool, but then you start reading it, and you're, like, this is a million times better than I ever thought it could be. Mm, okay. Okay, right, speaking of reading more romance, or, Tishai, did you have a recommendation or anything you wanted to... Um... What am I reading right now? I don't even know. Or I don't know. I don't watch it. I don't have any other shows that or movies. I'm finishing Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang. Ooh. I'm almost done. I'm like this far through. And it's interesting because it's 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 not a bunch of short stories. It's maybe like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's t it's nine stories. And one of them is the story of your life, which inspired the movie Arrival, which was in theaters recently, and is amazing. Mm. And it's a story about aliens and language and communication and time and like what defines us as human beings and what kind of decisions we would make. Around. I haven't gotten around to like seeing it. Oh my god! So Arrival is an amazing movie. Story of your life is an amazing short story. Story of Your Life and Others is a kind of a very intense book to read. It's I'm trying to get through it because I refuse to give up, but it is a very um, math and theory heavy book. Oh. So the short stories all have a scientific spin to them. So there's one that's specifically all mathematically involved, and there's another one about, it's kind of a cross between golems, like the Jewish golems and and creating life but it's creating life with parthenogenesis and there's science and there's <laughs> genetic manipulation and there's ovums and creating life from unfertilized and then there's wow, also like if you um finish, if you manage to finish before you leave pr like leave me that book because that sounds like yeah my, it's very, that sounds like I'm my gonna, jam I'm, yeah i'm definitely i'm gonna finish it before i leave and i'll definitely lend, like i'll leave it to you to read um I was going to ask mom if she wanted to read it, but as I was oh. reading through it, I don't know if it's her vibe necessarily. I don't know if she'll, I don't know if she'll get through it, right? Because I feel like she likes science, but there's so much. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, I don't know that it's her cup of tea. I, I would recommend a different science heavy book. So well, like one or two of the stories yeah. in it she might dig, but not the whole book probably. We should start like, if we start giving out like, at the end of like every book hangout, just like, Telling people what we read, we should link to it, like Chris with your linky magic. <laughs> okay. Add like at the bottom or something, like links to the Goodreads for whatever books we mention, like to the Bollywood Affair and mm. stories. Mm. Oh man, we could like put um, get Book Depository to give us an affiliate link or something. So if anyone uses Ooh. it, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Well, we'll yeah. say, write to them and be like, hey, we're like an official cool. like, subgroup yeah. <laughs> book club, whatever. But either way, book club. Just put link because I think, I think that'd be cool. I will. I'll do that. I'll do it. I'll, that was my homework. Um, let's see. So in January, I remember before we went live, I was talking about um, the the group maybe going on hiatus in January and February. I know that there's a book chosen for January, and so this is by an author that I actually like, like really like. We read before you guys joined me in book club. Um, we read uh, *Spears of Summergrass*, which took place in Africa, and it was about this heiress who was just like uh, she was so scandalous. And I always I imagined uh, Michael Fassbender as the lead man, and then like Franny Fisher from *Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries*. And I was just like, oh my god, so so gorge. Anyway, so it's called *A Curious Beginning*. It says, in her thrilling new series, because this is the first in a series, 
Oh, I hate those. I'm sorry. Look, if we get to pick, uh, if we, if they are like, do whatever you want in February or whatever, we'll pick. A, I tried to read a non-serious book with. Okay, look, I'm not gonna rehash it. <laughs> it says. <laughs> It says, in her thrilling new series, Deanna Rayborn, the New York Times bestselling author of the Julia Gray Mysteries, returns once more to Victorian England. Eh, well. <laughs> and introduces <laughs> the intrepid adventuress, Veronica Speedwell, London, 1887. 1887, fuck. After burying her spinster aunt, orphan Veronica Speedwell is free to resume her world travels in pursuit of scientific inquiry and the occasional romantic dalliance. As familiar with hunting butterflies as spending off admirers, Veronica intends to embark upon the journey of a lifetime. But fate has other plans when Veronica thwarts her own attempted abduction with the help of an enigmatic German baron who offers her sanctuary in the care of his friend Stoker, a reclusive and bad-tempered natural historian. But before the baron can reveal what he knows of the plot against her, he is found murder leaving Veronica and Stoker on the run from an elusive assailant as wary partners in the search of villainous truth. Wow, I feel like this, this summary told us a lot. It did. Whatever. <laughs> Let's just have a half the time. Know, like, half the book. <laughs> well, look, it's the Goodreads. Like, what? No, well, I know. What? Watch all of this happen in the first, like, chapter. <laughs> well, yeah. And then, and then, then the story is us finding out that she's blind. Oh, no. <laughs> But then she hits a tree, so she's not blind anymore. Ah, woo! <laughs> forget that. That's the same one where she like gets given opium, and then she's like on his lap, like purring. And she like purrs like, like a, a cat. cat, and she's like, yes. yes, cat play. Never forget that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying Sorry, to make this joke. Are the choker's choking you? Yeah, my choker's choking me. You guys, it's a plot. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. But, no, no, let's say goodbye. Ja, yeah. I think we covered our bases. I think I, I think we're set. Yeah. <laughs> we're set. All right. All right. Bye, well, internet. We this far. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you next month. Bye, internet. Go watch Vaginal Fantasies. Hang out. I think it's like in two days. It'll be funnier, better than this. And also, they're celebrating a five-year anniversary. This okay. is our number eighteen. Yeah. This is. Uh, I cannot believe. I know. That's pretty our, cool, though. I love you, girl. Club. <laughs> you would be here and more romance. I love you. My best friends. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>